Well, g'day, flatties and globe defenders. It's Critical Think from Down Under. Today we're looking at uh, the second fish tank experiment by Brandon Toy. Uh, it's great that he's done this experiment. Um, the analysis afterwards seems a bit lacking. And the execution of the experiment is marred by the fact that the water is cloudy after adding the sugar. But anyway, uh, wonderful that uh, Brandon has helped to prove the globe here with this experiment and we'll discuss this why. So what you see on the screen now is his before picture with water in the tank and no added sugar. He's added a few more things in the tank this time which I think is great and uh, gives you a great variety of things to look at. And here's the picture after the sugar has been added and as I've said it's ruined by the cloudiness really but the cloudiness also allows the flat earthers to see what they want in there rather than what's actually there but I'm just going to uh, point out a few things I'll pull up the side by side so important thing to note and uh, it is difficult to see some of this stuff but this Lego buildings in the back of the tank there are on a orange platform and they are behind the car and this blue gravel or whatever it is you can see is hidden behind the car and so is that orange platform in the added sugar with a density gradient and looming happening you can see the blue gravel behind the car and the orange platform. So it's self-evident there that there are things loomed up from behind an obstruction. So this is the very thing that makes things visible beyond the geometric curve. So there is a car, <coughs> there is a car compressed, also loomed up and visible behind the car is the things that would have been hidden if there was no refraction. Introduce some severe refraction in this case because it's a very short distance. Severe refraction amplifies the effects and there you go things loomed up from behind an obstruction. So let's look at Brandon's blink test. The bigger picture there should allow you to see that there's uh, blue behind the car in the compressed version. I also uh, repeated this experiment and uh, here is my experiment. Uh, there's a before, I've got a blink test uh, with, the, with the after. I'll just play this once. Uh, pay attention to the funnel. You can see it compressed but not only that you can see that the bottom of the tank, which is currently hidden by the funnel here, and the bottom of the ruler, which is currently hidden, will become visible. So I've got this up so that I can scroll through it manually now. So let me check here. So you see this ruler here behind this green funnel, and the, you can see the bottom of the ruler. So in the same experiment, things are loomed up that you can see them from behind an obstruction. The other thing to note here is this side is flat, this side is curved. Now, if we go back to the original, so some things to note. The marks on the ruler are evenly spaced in the before picture. This is a straight line and you can see that this is a curve here. So as we go to the blinked out one, there is some things to note. There is a curve here, 
and but then it becomes flat after that. So you might be thinking that compression can make a flat surface look curved. And to a certain degree that is true, but not curved in the way that we observe on a curved surface. So this part here in front of you is loomed up and then in a curve shape and then it's straight after that. Over here our curve is flattened out. So we've always said that the refraction, the downward bending of light with refraction can cause a flattening out of the curve. And that's illustrated here. This is actually curved here. It's flattened out. This is loomed up. This is all compressed up. So it's all consistent with what we observe in reality. Of course, the flat earth analysis of uh, this experiment is quite laughable really but uh, let's hear let's listen to some of it yeah there's nothing being loomed up behind something else though. so randy hasn't spotted it yet he said there's nothing being loomed up but as i've pointed out the orange platform is loomed up and the rocks behind the car are loomed up so uh randy that's incorrect but nothing's being brought up from behind something else you know, all this is doing is just manipulating the stuff that you can see. Well, no, not really, as I've explained. Hold on, I need to I need to retract something there. So Randy has now noticed that there's blue gravel behind the car. And so he's spending the rest of his time in that live stream trying to explain away how that's anything but looming. The car, the car. Now, if you look at the blue... Um, ground on that. The blue ground is visible behind the car in the compressed version, but not in the original. Oh, you're right. Yep. Yep, right here. Well, that's, you know, I was going to mention that. If you look so at the bottom... So, is, it, is it, it... So, I'm just trying to think what it is. So, it, it has to be... It is... Yeah, because the car has moved position too, so it's gone higher from on the left position it's lower down, you know, the wheels of it, you know, if you can look where they are, that, that orange band should be a lot lower than that, the last line. Yeah, so if you go down to the bottom of the car, that's quite low down in the image. But then if you go across to the right-hand side, can you see how much that's been pushed up? Ah, uh, you mean loomed, don't you? You're trying not to say the word loomed, you're saying pushed up, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This has been pushed up, and you, but you're right. There but it is a only push pushes it at rock. that at that uh, where you get that sort of inferior mirage, isn't it? Well, that's what I was going to show you here. Is yeah. So you're talking about in the real world. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's not an inferior mirage in my fish tank, but just imagine that you've got that inferior mirage band somewhere around here, or, or the ether band, and it's essentially just blocking everything at the bottom because that's the most dense or you know moist or that's where the mirage is happening right so this is where flat earthers don't understand optics and i've said this before and got abused for it but ranty is saying about oh well if you introduce an inferior mirage and so is Brandon Toy. They're saying, oh, but if you introduce an inferior mirage. So the, the problem with this is because they don't understand optics, they don't know that when you have conditions like this with a density gradient that causes light to bend down, an inferior mirage is impossible because an inferior mirage is light bending up. So it would be like saying, I'm in an elevator going down, but I'm going up at the same time. They've been able to recreate what you could class as a wave in the bottom, covering up the bottom of those buildings. Ah, uh, no, it's just a looming up. There's no recreation of any wave-like object. And those buildings are not obscured. Um, because the cloudiness of the tank when the sugar is in there, then uh, flat earthers are using this 
to somehow claim that there's something obscured bottom up there. And it's not. It's just not. Just through a density gradient. Um, and what's given it added um, sort of validity is the fact that you've got that compression right at the very bottom, which probably turns into an inferior mirage. And there you have it again. Compression turning into an inferior mirage. If you understood optics, Ranty, you would know that that is impossible. So let's recap a little bit here. Brandon Toy has demonstrated that something is loomed up from behind an obstruction and nothing here has actually disappeared bottom up even though flat earthers kid themselves that that's what they see. So in fact this is a good demonstration for the globe. But of course there's the usual backslapping that goes on with these things. This is, this is absolutely fantastic work, Brandon. I didn't expect it to be it so good. brilliant. Now, when we do experiments and point out things, all we get is abused. So let's listen to this one. Is that a flat earther could never have invented this because a flat earther doesn't understand optics. Fuck off, you prick. What a... Oh. <laughs> you what absolute prick. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> we understand optics very well, thank you very much. Whoa, looks like that hit a bit of a nerve. Didn't it, Ranty? <laughs> oh, but I've just demonstrated that you don't understand optics uh, because you think that the conditions for creating looming and compression are also the same conditions that may produce an inferior mirage. So no, you don't understand optics and you can swear at me as much as you like. It doesn't change the truth. Like, What is the scale of real life compared to this fish tank? Like the density gradient in here really ramps up as you start to get lower. You know, like down at the bottom of these things right here, it's, it's pretty dense gradient. You know, how how is it in reality, how do we interact with this density gradient? And this is uniform in the whole tank. Just imagine the density gradient across uh, 10 miles or 20 miles where you've got this situation. In this fish tank, the density gradient is significantly greater than you would find in real life. In fact, this density gradient's been studied, calculated, uh, everything done to for people to get to know how this behaves in real life, in reality, in nature. So there are papers written over the measurement of the refractive index, the refractive index of air and how you would work it out. There are websites with measurements of atmospheric conditions. There are calculations that can be done to work out how much refraction you actually have. And these things have all been applied by Ruhif and myself in analysing some of these C2FAR videos and also to analyse the effect of sinking. And, and this science tells us that the level of sinking that you require for the earth to be flat is impossible in our atmosphere because the variables are well known and 7 over 6 r is being calculated as normal through these equations now sometimes you can get refraction that's extreme and that will give us things that are loomed up more than normal and uh, of course the flat earthers are going to cherry pick these and uh, to say that this is proof of flat earth. But the science is well known. The atmospheric behaviour is well known. We don't need to speculate on that. We just need to measure it and calculate it. Might as well, before we get into the show proper, might as well uh, listen to this dude. This guy drives me nuts, I have to say. Yeah, he drives me absolutely nuts, yeah. I cannot stand this guy. I got 11 minutes. 
Uh, uh, I'm sorry, guys, if the truth hurts. Never mind.